Okay, so the video is recorded, and uh, but feel free to ask questions anytime. Anytime, I ask questions. Okay. Uh, Hi, Fines. Can you hear me, Fines? Yep. Okay, great, great. All right. Um, well, that's a really a special situation. Uh, we are, uh, uh, I'm trying to, because of the social distance requirement, uh, well, this lab with this class that we have to do it in the uh, classroom. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm trying to uh, probably make the lecture, uh, make the lecture online, or maybe I even pre-record the lecture, video recording the lecture, and then I'll have you guys come for the lab just during the uh, Wednesday afternoon when you have it ready. But I'll give you more information on that, okay? Uh, as I said, the video is recorded. We have uh, uh, 11 students right now, only eight uh, joined the uh, Zoom. Uh, we should have uh, another three students so I ask them to watch the video, uh, but feel free to ask questions. Feel free to ask questions. Today we'll uh, really start something, okay? First, we're gonna take a look at the syllabi, syllabus. Uh, syllabus. I'm gonna, share the screen with you, my syllabus here. Let me see, uh, share screen. So the video is recorded here. I'm gonna share the screen syllabus. I have so much, so many screens to open up here, but uh, this is one here. Okay, so our class time uh, is Wednesday, 12.30, to four o'clock. The put 35 minutes in between, we're not gonna have that 35 minutes. We'll just go uh, straight through. Whenever we end, we'll end. And also, I'm thinking of doing the lecture online and just have it, uh, a few of you come in at a time for the lab because we only have four machines at a time. So, only four people can come in at a time. So we might have divided into uh, we might have divided into uh, three groups. So four at a time, four at a time. I will probably pre-record the lecture. Uh, I'll see the equipment if I if I can because uh, uh, it's kind of awkward. Sometimes it's hard to, uh, hard to record, hard to see. If I write something, it's hard for you to see here. You'll find it out, okay? It's hard for you to see. So the uh, class, classroom, the classroom location is Wilson 188. That's where our equipment is. Wilson 188. Uh, Please check your email, please check your email. Uh, all the instructions will be given uh, through email, okay? Please check your email very often. And most of the instructions blended, blended. I have off hour listed here in the syllabus, but uh, again, uh, we are not required to stay in office during office hour. Uh, so if you want to meet with me uh, in person, you need to send me an email uh, ahead of time. 
and uh, we really need to make an appointment so that I will wait for you in the office. I will wait up for you in the office. Uh, this class, for some of us, I would think it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. But for some of us, I see uh, some other students might uh, struggle a little bit, especially it's a, it is a programming class. It is a programming class. Even we're gonna implement the program on the machine, but it's mainly the programming class. Okay. Uh, any uh, questions? Any questions? Uh, since last semester, you guys only have half semester. <laughs> I would uh, uh, somehow review some of those concepts in uh, MET 132, in MET 132, review some of those concepts, the menu machines. Mainly we're working on two kinds of machines. One is a lace, one is a mill, and uh, we'll review some of those. Uh, we're not gonna go back to the menu lace or menu mill, but I will review some of those uh, concepts, concepts, okay? So uh, we don't have a textbook, no textbook is required. Uh, no textbook is required, but the machine does have a menu. The machine does have a menu, a very big menu over there, 500 pages. Uh, it's available somewhere in the lab you really need to get a hold of it, let me know, okay? Uh, and I kept, I kept a copy in my office. The copy in the lab probably is hard to find. So if you really need to know, uh, to, to read the text, let me know. Otherwise, I would ask you to take notes, even today. I would like to ask you to uh, take notes, okay? And the objective is that by the end of the semester, uh, at least you know the fundamentals of CNC machines. CNC machines, and you have basic understanding of uh, operation of CNC machines and what it can do, okay? Uh, I don't expect I don't expect you to be a CNC operator, which we which you could, but I would expect that in the future you you will be a supervisor of some kind, or a manufacturing engineer of some kind, and uh, you need to know you need to know. Uh, for example, locally I know I'm with the many companies. You know, locally, for example, if you go to uh, Purina, you go to Purina and they have a maintenance group and their machines are CNC machines. And you go to Johnson Control, they have a maintenance crew over there. Machines are CNC machine too. And not to mention Artec, Artec the machines are all CNC, not all, maybe 95% are CNC machines. You go to the CNC machines and uh, you'll see over there. I talked with uh, the uh, operator over there and uh, he said that he's, a, he's the only guy that's the owner of the CNC machine. He said that he's the only guy that know how to program it and something like that. But uh, I don't think because uh, uh, a lot of our graduates uh, working there. The two machine. Uh, any uh, questions? That's a noisy. I don't know from whom. From fine, I'm gonna mute fine here. Fine, saying I'm gonna mute you, okay? Uh, what, do you recall what kind of which brand of machines are in the uh, shop that we're gonna be working with? 
very good question. Very good question. Uh, uh, the brand is a cheap brand. It's called a GSK. Uh, GSK machines. G uh, as in George, S as in uh, Sam, K as in Kansas, GSK. And uh, this, uh, this is a cheap brand. It's a cheap brand. Uh, it's a cheap brand, but it's an industrial size machine. Okay, industrial size machine. We are working on, we are working on uh, plastics. However, it can cut steel. The reason we don't want to work on metals is that once you work on metals, you got to use lubricant. And uh, the maintenance uh, uh, department of the campus just don't want to ask that. Do that. Yeah, they absolutely hate it. This is going to make a mess over there. Uh, plastic, it's OK. We don't have to use uh, coolant. Now, the uh, processor uh, in the CNC machines, we don't need to know that, but there is a processor, which is a processor. There are actually three processors. Those three processors is what we call the PLCs. Some of you took a PLC class, Program for Logical Controllers. There are some kind of PLCs. And then those PLC, they use uh, the CNC, use its own code. We call it the G code and M code. And the code we use, we use a Mitsubishi, the Japanese company Mitsubishi, we use their code. Okay, we use their code. It's a pretty straightforward code. It's a, uh, I'll let you know, the code is not universal. Uh, the G code, only maybe the G02, G01, only G01 and G00, are universal, and when once you come to G02, G03, that's a difference. That's a difference here, just like uh, PLC, okay? The code sometimes is a little bit different, but I'll let you know, I'll let you know, okay? We are, miss, we are using Mitsubishi uh, code over there, but the machine, Uh, the machine is a GSK machine. Did that answer your question, I, John? Yeah, thank you. That was okay. very helpful. Okay. Like I learned on a Haas, I learned, I worked with a Haas for a while at Hilliard and I know that's gonna be completely different. So just preparing myself. Wow, that's great. Uh, I mean, you you have a head start in most of us. Uh, Haas is a good machine, but it's a, uh, too expensive for us. We are education uh, process uh, uh, organization, and uh, it is an industrial machine. It's just uh, cheap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, uh, anyway, if you're gonna be an engineer, like a, like a supervisor. Uh, no matter who you work for, let's say you work for Ford, we have graduates working for Ford, working for Fairfax, uh, that the GM plane, uh, uh, manufacturing automobile. And if you know the CNC, you had a working experience with it, no uh, workers over there can bully you uh, because uh, uh, corporate place sometimes uh, it's like a jungle, okay? And uh, if you know nothing, and they'll bully you. Uh, but if you know something, then they'll obey you. And uh, uh, most of us is going to be once you graduate, it's either going to be in design or in uh, supervisor positions, and uh, you need to have the knowledge, okay? So that's uh, the goal, the objective of this class. And uh, now, uh, 
uh, grading, we are concerned about that. Uh, we do have two exams, uh, one middle term, one, mid one final, and that's 50% of your grades. And then the lab, we have labs. Uh, it's 40% and the class participation is 10%. Okay, that's 10%. Uh, so I hope you're joining in uh, every time on the Zoom or you watch the videos. If I send out a video, I said, well, that's today's lecture. Please watch this video. You're really gonna watch it because uh, I, I know how many people watch it. And uh, if you don't watch it, and then you naturally will have questions. You, will, you don't know how to do the uh, lab and I'll be able to find out. So this, the uh, class participation, uh, used to be attendance, but uh, for this semester, we are not taking attendance. Okay, we're not taking attendance. So you do have the freedom to not to attend the class, but uh, you will be required to watch the video. Okay, and once you make a 90% above, uh, you'll have an A, uh, you make an 80 to 89%, you have B, and uh, I hope everybody at least get a C, 70, 79%. Um, it's really, uh, it's, a, it's kind of fun class. It's, uh, sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's not. Okay. So again, attendance policy, we're not taking attendance this, uh, this semester because of this uh, pandemic. Man, uh, Missouri, state of Missouri right now is ranked number 22 in the uh, COVID uh, ranking over there. And California is number one, the number of cases. Missouri used to be at 30, the climb eight spots. Um, it's uh, still be careful, stay safe, okay, everyone. Uh, now, uh, one more thing here, once you come for the lab or lecture, if we do it in class. Once you come for the lecture or lab, you are required to wear a mask, face mask. Okay, uh, I'll show you here. I have one here. Let's see, face mask here. Uh, you are required to 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 wear a face mask. And uh, okay. You are required to wear a face mask, uh, what else? Uh, if you feel sick or have, have some reason that you cannot wear a mask, then you don't, uh, you don't come to class, but I don't know how you're gonna do the lab. Um, so anyway, let me know, okay, email me. We'll, we'll figure out a way to do it if you can wear a mask, or if you feel sick and uh, take a, a week off, it's fine, it's okay, all right? Uh, safety is number one. And when we talk about safety, I'm gonna share with you another screen here. Uh, I'm gonna stop this screen here. I, I'll share with you another screen. Uh, for safety here. Okay. Uh, can you guys see it? See my screen? You should be able to see it, right? Yep. Okay, thanks. Uh, that's a machine shop, safety rules. Uh, you guys probably talked about that last semester, but I'm gonna just uh, uh, end, uh, emphasize again. Uh, first is eye protection is required all the time. Uh, now for our, for our shop, we are not that stringent on this one here. Uh, 
because we are using plastics again. We're using plastics. Uh, and uh, enclosed machines too. Yeah, and closed machines too. Uh, but if you are uh, working in the uh, real world, please uh, have eye protection. If you got a, a metal chip in your eye, it's not good. You don't want to damage your cornea. It's not worth it. Okay. And uh, certainly in most uh, place, your, in most work in your workplace, if you are dealing with machines, you will be required to wear uh, steel toed boots, steel toed boots. Uh, we are not required here. <laughs> okay, so that's this one here. And uh, also uh, clothes. Your clothes, your, you got to wear clothes that is tightly fit. And the second one is uh, this one here. Uh, is uh, uh, it's kind of interesting. It says uh, never never wear gloves while operating machine shop equipment with a rotating part. With a rotating part, okay. All of our machines has a rotating part. We have a spindle that spins, so you don't wear gloves. You don't wear gloves. Uh, for most rotating machines. If you have to wear gloves, you gotta wear at least leather gloves, thick leather gloves. Okay, otherwise you don't wear gloves. That's something that uh, uh, we talk about that in uh, machine shop practice. Even like a, like a, like a cordless drill, or oh, not maybe maybe not cordless drill is uh, it's not that powerful, but even like a one six horsepower electric drill, uh, like you are using to mix paint or something like that. Paint if you want to paint your house, use the electric electric drill to mix in your paint. You don't want to wear gloves because that, especially those vinyl gloves, those uh, plastic gloves, rubber gloves, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do a lot of damage to your hands. Create an accident. Okay, I had the experience before. <laughs> it's not fun. Uh, I don't know if this apply to any of us. If you have long hairs, you gotta be tied and tuckered in under a head. You just don't wanna get any parts of your body into the machines. And um, uh, number four, no loose clothes, especially hanging sleeves or strings. None of those. And uh, number five, do not wear rings, jewelry, uh, when operating machineries. That's not only applied to machine, machine shop, any machines. Uh, you don't want to wear that. Uh, I know locally, for example, uh, if you go to a Berenger Ingham uh, and uh, they have a GMP, uh, good manufacturing practice, good manufacturing practice. And they have food and drug manufacturing, Nesopurina, uh, downtown, Nesopurina. You cannot wear rings or jewelry. You cannot wear those in the shop either. Okay, you can do that. GMP specifically require you to take rings off when you go into manufacturing places. Okay, and number six, before turning on spindle of any machines, make sure that all parts and the tools are secured properly, and that all chucks or draw bars, wrenches are removed. All right, we uh, last year we we had once we had once somebody left the wrench on and turned on 
and make a big bang noise. For some guys, I, I was always joking with them. I said, well, for you to operate in, operating the machine, I'm going to hide somewhere. <laughs> so uh, those are the safety rules, OK, safety rules. Um, I will, I will uh, put this file on Canvas. I'll put this file on Canvas. If you didn't write it down, I'll put this file on Canvas. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here. Stop here. And uh, now I'm gonna share with you any questions. If you have any questions, let me know, okay? Uh, I'm gonna share with you another, another file. I'm gonna share with you another file here. Um, what is this? Okay. Share this one here. I'm going to share this one here. And now, let's take a look at uh, uh, the main equipment of the lathe. Uh, no matter it's a manual lathe, uh, manual lathe, sometimes we call it an engine lathe, engine lathe, uh, engine lathe, or CNC lathe. Uh, there are some parameters we need to know, some terminology, some parameters we need to know. Uh, those parameters, there are uh, spindle speed, spindle speed, how fast the spindle goes, spindle speed. Now, our CNC machines here can go maximum 2,000. RPM, 2000 RPM, maximum. And uh, uh, I know uh, uh, some local uh, companies that's very fancy CNC machines. I went to a great manufacturing and uh, their CNC machine can go to uh, 6000 RPM, 6000. And uh, uh, welding, welding machinery, they have very good CNC machines over there too. It can go to 6,000. And uh, Rodin, uh, I think Artec, now yeah, it can go very high too. Uh, they have a span of uh, uh, Artec, I think it's six feet. So six feet, you can chuck, you can claim a workpiece. You can claim a workpiece six feet long on the machine, six feet long on the machine, six feet long on the machine. And we have, uh, uh, I think that we have a, a range of might be, I don't know, 36 inch, 36 inch, three feet. And uh, uh, but the diameter, the diameter of, uh, we can work on is about a three inches, okay? Our chuck is only three inches and the tool can only move three inches, can only move three inches. So this, uh, this are our machines here, this are our machines. And some machines can move like a diameter can go up as a, a two feet, 24 inches. Those are big machines locally. I, I remember I see one, I forgot it was gray or Artec, but they can go be very high, okay, spin the speed. Then feed rate, feed rate is how fast, I said this is your, this is your work piece and you are cutting here, this is your tool, you are cutting here. How fast your tool moves, how fast your tool moves that's something we call a feed rate, feed rate. Okay, another one is depth of cut, depth of cut. That is very important too, okay, that is very important. How deep you can cut, how deep you can cut. You have, uh, okay, let's say this is your work piece here. This is your work piece here. I have my water bottle here. 
And this is your tool. This is your tool. You are cutting here. You are cutting here. Okay, you are cutting here. This work piece is rotating. The work piece is rotating. And you, this is your tool. You are cutting here. And if you want to cut this shape, you, if you want to cut this shape, you see my bottle here. If you want to cut this shape, you can do it in one cut. Let's say that's my, that's my cutting tool. You'll see my tip. This is the cutting place. This tip is my cutting place. If you cut it in one cut, all the tools, all the tools, the shank of the tool will sink into the workpiece. The only cutting tip is this piece of metal here, this piece of metal. You are cutting like this, you are cutting like this. So the depth of cut, depth of cut is limited, is limited. If you want to cut something like this, you got to cut like a peel, an onion. You got to cut layer by layer, cut one layer and come back and move down and cut another layer, come back, move down, cut another layer, come back, move down and eventually cut this, eventually cut this. Okay, you gotta cut layer by layer. Depths of cut, that's really important. Depths of cut, okay. And uh, depths of cut. Now, where do we get uh, this information? This de depths of cut, this information here, I have a, I have a, file here that I will uh, attach today to you. Uh, when I post the video, I'll attach it. Now the video is posted on YouTube, okay? It's, it's gonna be posted on YouTube. So it's, uh, it, it'll be uh, public. <laughs> Everybody uh, can see it. I don't know if anybody wants to see it, but uh, if they do, they can see it. Now I will send an email uh, with the attachment of this file here, of this file here. And uh, uh, this file here, normally those information are from tool manufacturer. Okay, if you buy a piece of a tool, they'll give, you, they'll give you this information. Okay, for example, if you're cutting, they'll, they'll give you the cutting speed. Now the cutting speed, the cutting speed and uh, the feed rate, they are different from our machines. Even they use the same word, feed rate. But this feed rate is inch per revolution. So the manufacturer, the tool manufacturer gave you inch per revolution, the speed rate. But in the machining, when we talk about a feed rate, we are talking about an inch per minute. Okay, so it's different concept here, different concept. So those information is given by the tool manufacturer. Now, if it's a common tool, for example, ceramic tool, Tungsten carbide ceramic tool, tungsten carbide ceramic tool. You'll get this information anywhere uh, on the internet, uh, machinist uh, handbook. You'll get those information uh, anywhere. Okay, uh, high speed steel, the tool here. You'll see that I said ceramic carbide ceramic tool. That's normally tungsten carbide, tungsten carbide and to make this tool, ceramic tool. And uh, now, uh, so uh, the cutting speed is provided by manufacturer, which is in the unit of feet per minute, feet per minute. And based on this information and uh, depth of cut, is 0.1, uh, this is for, uh, anyway, for, um, given by the tool manufacturer, given by the tool manufacturer, uh, 
the depth of cut is if you look up uh, the video here and uh, the depth of cut is how much is this tip that is sharpened for cutting the workpiece. How much this tip is sharpened? So you know the shape of uh, the uh, ceramic tile, ceramic uh, ceramic tool, ceramic carbide carbide tool, tungsten carbide tool is normally a diamond shape. Normally a diamond shape, certainly that can be any other shape, okay? Normally, I don't know if you can see, a diamond shape here. And then this is a cutting edge. This is a cutting edge. So you see, this is a cutting edge. This is a cutting edge. And by this cutting edge, they'll tell you, okay, this is 0.1 inches. So depth of cut, maximum depth, depth of cut, 0.1 inches. All right, 0.1 inches. Now, uh, for all that, because we are cutting plastics, sometimes you cut a little bit more, it's no big deal uh, because it's plastics. And uh, if you're cutting metal, if you're cutting metal, Depth of cut too much, you're gonna damage the tool right away. Uh, by the way, those uh, uh, tungsten carbide ceramic tools, those uh, those tools become really expensive now. Um, nowadays, it becomes really expensive. Uh, so uh, now another thing is that uh, if you look at this table here. Uh, you'll see, uh, I said an inch system, and the tool is carbide ceramic tool. And then the material we're cutting is aluminum. That's a workpiece material. And uh, we are using plastics. Plastics are considered to be aluminum, okay? <laughs> this, uh, this aluminum data here. So that's the data we're gonna go by, aluminum carbide ceramic tool. For roughing, for roughing, your cutting speed is 800 feet per minute. Feet rate is 0 0.001 inch per revolution, per revolution. And the finishing, if you want, if you want to make a, a nice smooth surface, the last cut, Last cut is what we call finishing. Finishing, okay. Roughing, you can cut a little bit more. You can cut a little bit more here. And then the last cut, you want to make it a smooth. You want to make it smooth. And the last cut, you want to make it smooth. This operation, we call it finishing. Finishing. And certainly drill is drilling is a drill. You, you drill a hole, you drill a hole, drilling. You drill a hole here. Grooving, grooving. Uh, you'll see the groove here. You'll see this groove here. This is grooving. This grooving here. Okay, this grooving. Uh, we'll talk about those uh, operations uh, when we uh, when we do the lab when we do the lab here. What do we need to pay attention to when we do those operations here? When we do those operations. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna fast forward to the end of the documents here. There is an example here. Okay, this example here. We need to find out the spindle speed. We need to find out the spindle speed. Let's say if we have one inch stock, there's a formula Spindle speed, which is RPM, is equal to four times cutting speed. That is foot per minute, foot per minute, divided by diameter of the workpiece. Except for drilling and the meeting, which is the diameter of the drill bit, the drill bit. Now milling is a little bit different. The drill bit, we have four fluid bit, 
and two flu bid, two flute bid, uh, which are, okay, here. Okay, for milling, calculation is based on uh, two flute meal, feed rate for four flute meal is double of that two flute meal. Feed rate, feed rate. Okay, feed rate. And then feed rate, inch per minute is equal to feed rate, inch per revolution times spindle speed. Uh, some, uh, you don't have to be very precise, you don't have to be very precise, but some consideration. In general, if you have a harder material, let's say steel, when we talk about engineering material, we, uh, in that class, engineering materials, we talk about the hardness of material, right? We know like brass is softer than steel. Softer is really not like soft like a pillow. No, it's, a, it's still very hard, right? It's still a piece of metal. It's just a relative term. It's softer than steel. And the steel, low carbon steel, is softer than mild steel. And if you have a cast iron, that's really, really hard. So if you want to machine cast iron, you better use a very small depth of cut and a very slow feed rate. Very slow feed rate, you better, you, you better have that, okay? And uh, the harder the material, the lower the spindle speed and the feed rate and depth of cut. Uh, okay, and the hardness, the hardness is uh, certainly plastics. Uh, it's much softer than uh, aluminum. Some of the plastics have hardness as, uh, as hard as aluminum too, <laughs> okay? Nowadays, those materials uh, like uh, polycarbonate, polycarbonate, some of those materials are pretty hard, pretty hard plastics. Copper, brass, copper brass, okay, brass is a copper. Plain carbon steel, plain carbon steel, plain carbon steel, just the, we call it carbon steel. It has a low carbon steel, medium carbon steel, the medium carbon steel, sometimes we call it mild steel. That's in your uh, engineering materials. Uh, mild steel. And then we have a high carbon steel. High carbon steel actually is pretty hard. It's very hard, okay? And then no alloy steel, low alloy steel. What is low alloy steel? If the alloy elements, alloy means we have two metals together. We have steel and other metal, for example, nickel or chromium. And if we have a low alloy steel, low alloy steel, and uh, the alloy elements is less than 5%, less than 5% by weight, less than 5% by weight. For example, 95% of steel, uh, of iron, and 4.5% of uh, nickel, and 0.5% of uh, carbon or maybe silicon, and that makes a low alloy steel. Now, why do we need low alloy steel? Low alloy steel, uh, uh, a good thing for low alloy steel is that uh, that's in engineering materials. Uh, anyway, I'm just uh, throughout here, kind of a little, little bit of review. Uh, the metals has a phenomenon called, uh, 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 it's called, uh, uh, ductile to uh, uh, brittle transition, ductile to brittle transition, ductile to brittle transition. 
It has this phenomenon. Okay, we all know Titanic, right? We, we saw that movie, Titanic. Uh, uh, that, uh, that movie, that... Uh, uh, no, Titanic. Uh, we know that, uh, that ship. Uh, very famous story of the... It was built very well designed, very well built, and it hit an iceberg. Then it cracked, then it cracked, and then sunk. But it's not supposed to do that because it was designed that you hit an iceberg, it's not a big deal. You probably just stand it. You probably just stand it. Your piece of metal just has, has a big dent. But the, 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 the material, the, the uh, steel they use is a plain carbon steel. The plain carbon steel is this one here. It's plain carbon steel. And plain carbon steel, under impact, under impact, it will become brittle at low temperature, a low temperature, a low temperature. Like zero, zero degree over there. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember. A few years ago in Minnesota, there's a bridge that collapsed. There's a bridge that collapsed. Remember that accident? Uh, you can probably even search the video on YouTube. I don't know if there's like a lady screaming and then dropping in the river and died and something like that. Uh, the bridge collapsed uh, because those the materials, okay, because the materials, the low carbon steel is cheap, it's widely used. Uh, it has uh, uh, brittle, uh, ductile to brittle transition. It has a ductile to brittle transition, low carbon steel. And not only that, it will fatigue, it will fatigue. Fatigue means if you, are uh, you getting tired, right? Human beings getting tired, but the metals, well, they get tired and fatigue. And we find out, yes, the will too, uh, certain material, certain material. Uh, for example, plain carbon steel, plain carbon steel, the will, aluminum, Aluminum, the wheel, the wheel get fatigued. If you use, uh, we call it a cyclic load, cyclic load. You are under stress, under tension, and then under compression all the time. Tension, compression, tension, compression all the time. And after a certain period of time, it will become fatigued. And the fatigue means the strength Lowered, it keep lower, keep lower. The strength keep lower. Eventually, it loses strength, and then a bridge collapsed. So that a bridge collapsed, they find out is due to those two reasons. One is that it's uh, uh, it's low temperature. It's low temperature. There's a glass tube. It's a ductile to brittle transition, low temperature. The second one is uh, fatigue because that bridge has been used for many, many years. It's fatigued. Okay. Now, if you add a little bit of alloy, you can't even tell from outside of the metal. If you add a whole bunch of alloy, you can tell the difference. It becomes stainless steel. It becomes stainless steel. But if you add less than 5% from looking, it doesn't change anything. And you use through 5% of nickel by weight into steel from looking, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything. It does not have stainless steel, it does not have corrosion resistance property, it does not. It looks the same, but it dramatically changed this fractal to brittle 
transition temperature to change it to very, very low, very, very low. Uh, in my uh, undergraduate uh, uh, education, we, did, we didn't have the equipment here. Uh, when I went to uh, my under, I, uh, we did some experiment to, to do that, to, to prove that. Uh, for low alloy steel, even you put in liquid nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, that is minus liquid nitrogen. I think it's minus, I forgot, it's minus uh, 170 degrees Celsius. I forgot the exact temperature. Minus uh, 100, more than 100 degrees Celsius. Even you put it in liquid nitrogen and you take it out on the impact, you're not gonna break it. So that means the ductile to brittle transition hasn't happened yet at that temperature, at that temperature. Very, very low temperature. But for plain carbon steel, we did an experiment that you use dry ice. Anybody knows what is dry ice? Solid CO2. Yeah, solid CO2. Dry ice. Dry ice, probably about uh, negative, negative 30 degrees Celsius, something like that. 30 degrees Celsius. And uh, even like negative 30 degree, degree Celsius, which in Minnesota will have this low temperature in the winter, okay? Minnesota will easily have this low temperature in the winter. And the plain carbon steel can break like a, like a piece of glass, like a piece of glass. You use a hammer, you knock it, it'll break. Under that temperature, low temperature. That's something we call ductile to brittle transition. It becomes brittle, becomes brittle. You cannot have impact. And uh, uh, so those are the uh, other, other hardness here. Okay, uh, roughing has lower spindle speed than finishing. Finishing has less feed rate and depth of cut comparing to roughing. Uh, we need to specify those in the program, in the program, later on we'll, we'll talk about that, okay? And different manufacturers of the tooling might have different data here. This one I got from Machinist Handbook. Okay, I'll give you an example here. How do we calculate the spindle speed and feed rate? Uh, let's say if we have aluminum materials, aluminum, the diameter of the workpiece is one inch. If we have HSS, which stands for high, uh, high speed steel, high speed steel. This is a steel tool, it's not a ceramic tool. There's a data over there. This data here, high speed steel. Yeah, you see high speed steel. Okay, so this data here, high speed steel. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, high speed steel. Okay, so this data, this 250 is from the table above. This four is in the formula here. This four is in the formula here, in the formula here. Four times 250 divided by one, you have 1,000 RPM, 1,000 RPM, 1,000 RPM, yeah. And then feed rate, your 0.01 times 1,000 RPM. Where does this 0.01 come from? It's come from the table here. Come from table. Oh, not a 0.01, 0.1, oh, where's 0.01? Oh, uh, I must have made a mistake. It's point 0.1. It's point 0.1. So you can actually, point 0.1, you can actually have 100 inch, 100 inch per minute feed rate. 100 inch per minute. Okay. 
uh, this just gave you some idea. How do we calculate that? How do we calculate that? Uh, in real machining, um, sometimes we just use 1000 RPM because we are cutting plastic. And uh, I think we are using 10, 10 inch per minute. I think this is what we use. What is this point? Oh, oh, I made a mistake. We can go to 100, but don't go 100. <laughs> That's a little bit too fast. 100 inch per minute. We go, we use 10 here, just to be safe. Oh, feed rate. Oh, here, here, here. Oh, here. Feed rate. Uh, 0.01. Yeah, so it's okay. <laughs> I didn't make a mistake. Oh, 0.01 here. 0 0.01. 0 0.01. Feed rate. I look at this data here. What is it? This one here. Feed rate. 0.01. Okay. So we use 10, uh, 10 inch per minute, 10 inch per minute. Any uh, questions about uh, the uh, calculations? Okay. Uh, I think it's uh, pretty uh, straightforward, pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward. Uh, Pretty straightforward. Okay. Is this available on Canvas? I will attach uh, the file on Canvas, okay? All right, great. Okay, great. Good question, good question. Uh, now, uh, next, next, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a little bit more here, okay? We're gonna do, today we're gonna do a little bit more here. Next, what I'm gonna do is, I don't know if you can read, let me know, okay? Uh, what we do is that uh, for, if we need to cut something, let's say if we need to cut this shape, we need to cut this shape, if we need to cut this shape, we're making a mold for this bottle, we're making a mold for this bottle, well, we want to cut this shape, which our machine can do it perfectly, can cut it, okay? No problem for cutting something like this. No problem, okay? Now, let's say if we want to cut something like this and we take a stock, we take a stock, that's our stock, that's our stock, and then we cut it, and then we cut it like this. That's the final product. That's the final product. And this is the stock, the stock, all right? And then before we cut, we make a coordinate system. We make a coordinate system. I'm gonna draw it here. I need to, I need to use a big marker so you can see better here. Okay, we're gonna make, uh, I'm gonna stop this, uh, stop sharing this screen here. Okay, so, uh, we're gonna make a coordinate system here. We're gonna make a coordinate system here, okay? So this is our workpiece. This is our workpiece. This one here is a workpiece. It's actually wrong. The workpiece actually is wrong, okay, it's wrong. But in a two-dimensional plane, it becomes, in a two-dimensional plane, it becomes a rectangular, right? Okay. Like that, right? Now, we call the coordinate, we call this axis Z here. Z, we call this axis X. Okay, this is universal for all machines. We call this axis Z, Z here. We call this axis X, X. All right, now, the direction is always like this. Direction is always like this. Now, if you see on the machine screen, on the machine screen, you'll see the Z number. In the machining process, you'll see the Z number. It changes from, the number changes smaller, smaller, smaller. That means your tool moves towards the workpiece. Okay, so that's the workpiece. Workpiece or sometimes we call it a stock. Okay, so this workpiece, 
sometimes we call it stock. If the Z number, Z, the Z number, you see the coordinates of the Z on the machine screen, it will tell you all the time, okay, right now it's 2.3 and then it becomes one, becomes 0.5, becomes negative, becomes negative. That means the tool is moving, the tool is moving towards the workpiece, moving towards the workpiece. Okay, so that's a tool here. So this is a tool. That's a tool here. Well, moving towards workpiece, moving towards workpiece. And uh, we have that, and this one, the coordinate zero, this, we have three zeros in CNC machines. This is coordinate zero. This one here is coordinate zero. Coordinate zero here. Okay, coordinate zero. And uh, uh, now, uh, normally we do, we put a coordinates here. Now, we have three zeros, that's coordinate zero. And this one here is what we call pot reference zero. Okay, this one here is what we call pot reference zero, PRZ, PRZ, pot reference zero. And normally we're gonna, actually we're gonna move the X axis here. We're gonna move the X axis here. We're gonna move the X axis here. I don't know if you can see, I can see, okay. We're gonna move the axis, X axis to here. So the coordinate zero is the PRZ, the part zero, is a part zero. Okay, we're gonna move the axis here, okay? So now once we set the coordinates like this, we set the coordinates like this, if Z becomes negative, if Z is negative, we know the tool is cutting into the workpiece. If Z is negative, the tool is cutting into the workpiece. Okay, so you gotta be careful. If Z is negative, then the tool is cutting into workpiece. Cutting into workpiece. All right, so this is one here. Now, uh, this point here, Okay, this point here, this point here, the tool tip, the tool tip is something we call machine reference zero. Machine reference zero. Okay, so that's a tool tip. It's machine reference zero. You can see that, right? And now the machine even has a processor, has a computer, in the machine, but actually the machine doesn't know where is the PRZ, where is the MRZ. It doesn't know. And uh, when we program, we only concern about the PRZ because we set the coordinates ourselves. We set our coordinates ourselves. And this coordinates, then we will tell the machine the coordinates. So we know where is PRZ, but we don't know where is MRZ. We know where is PRZ in the program, right? So later on, I'll let you know, how do we tell the machine where uh, is PRZ, where is MRZ? We don't tell the exact numbers. We just tell them, we don't tell the machine the PRZ, MRZ, the coordinates. We don't tell the machine that. We just tell the machine to move the MRZ to PRZ, 
to move the machine zero to path zero. And once those two points on top of each other, then the machine has all the data it needs, has all the data it needs. Then it can execute your program, your program, all right? Uh, now, one more concept here, one more concept. In LACE, something we call diameter programming. Diameter programming. In LACE is what we call diameter programming. Diameter programming. What is diameter programming? Let's say if we have one inch stock, let's say if we have one inch stock and this zero, zero here, and this one is zero, zero here, we have zero, zero here, and zero, zero here, we have one inch stock, one inch stock, one inch stock, and we set this coordinates to be one. The coordinates here is one, is one. X is equal to one because we use diameter programming. It's one here, it's one. Okay, now, so let's say this one here and this one, for any coordinates, you, you need to have two numbers. You need to have X number and Z number. And Z here is zero, right? Z here is zero. Z is zero here. So this, this point here, this point, Z is zero. Okay, so let me give you another example here. Again, my bottle, my water bottle here. Let's say that's two inches. I assume it's two inches. I don't have a ruler here, but, uh, mm, okay, two inches. And we need to cut it like this. We need to cut it into, cut the bottle neck to be one inch. From two inch, from two inch to one inch. Okay, from two inch to one inch. And that's how we set the coordinates. That's how we set the coordinates. Okay, so that's how we set the coordinates here. That's how we set the coordinates here. So this Z, this X, and the bottle here, that is two inches. So let's say if I have this point, I have this point here, I have this point here, and this point, any point in a two dimensional coordinates you will have two values, right? Okay. You have two values. What's gonna be the value of this point? If there's a two inch bottle, two inch stock, and the value of this point, it will be X equal to two, Z equal to zero. Here, X equal to two, Z equal to zero. Can you see it? Okay. Now, you want to cut the bottleneck, you want to cut the bottleneck to one inches. You want to cut the bottleneck to one inches. Okay, let's say you want to cut the bottleneck to one inches here, right? To here, to here. Now I'm gonna ask you, for example, this point, let's say this point here, that's A point, B point, and C point. Let's say that's a half inch here, that's one inch, that's a half inch. Okay, so can you see it? Now let me ask you, what's gonna be the coordinates for B point, for B point?
Okay, anybody know it? You can turn on your microphone and say, what's gonna be the, what's gonna be the uh, coordinates for B point, for B point? You're gonna have two values, right? You're gonna have an X value and Z value. One, be one zero. Yes, it's gonna be one zero. Great, great. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you again, what's gonna be the coordinates for C point, for C point, C? For C point, which is here, for C point, oh, I got some. One, one negative five, point five. Yeah, one negative point five. Okay, one negative point five, negative point five. Don't forget the negative. Don't forget the negative. That's something we call the diameter programming. Those values are diameter, a diameter. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, okay, so those values are diameter from two inches to one inch. Now if I, let's say if I just make one cut, if I just make one cut, if I just make one cut from A to C, or, or from B to C, I just make one cut from B to see, to make this shape, to make this shape, I make one cut, I make one cut, which is not good, by the way, but just for study the coordinates, I make one cut, I'm gonna ask you, in this cut, what's gonna be my depth of cut? Depth of cut. What's going to be my depth of cut? Half. 0.5 inches. 0.5 inches. John, you got it? 0.5 inches. Mm Okay, uh, Logan asked a question. Uh, wouldn't the X value to be 0.5 rather than one? That's something that we need to pay attention, okay. We are, we are using diameter programming. We are using diameter value. So that's the reason that it is not 0.5, it's one. Okay, for this point here, for this point here, it's one, it's not a 0.5 because it's diameter. You are using the whole value here, from here to here, from here to here, using the whole value as the X value, as the X value. That's the diameter value, okay? Diameter value, diameter programming. But the depth of cut is the real depth. Depth of cut is Real value, it's real value. Depths of cut is real value. Depths of cut is real value. The coordinates is double the distance, it's double the distance. Diameter programming. All right. Uh, Okay, uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna stop here today. I'll uh, I'll send an email, and also please check your email, and also I'll send an email let you know next Wednesday whether we meet in class or we meet 
in uh, uh, we meet in class or we, we meet by Zoom, I'll let you know. Okay. Next. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, what does PRZ mean? Okay. Very good question. Very good question. PRZ means pot reference zero. Pot reference zero. Okay, thank you. Okay. MRZ means machine reference zero. Any any questions? Any questions? Um, if no questions. Uh, I will give. I, I will. Uh, I will email you. I'll attach those files, and also send you a video link. And uh, we're gonna stop here today. Uh, everyone, please uh, stay safe, and uh, have a good weekend. Okay, we're gonna stop here. And you have a great weekend too. You too. Yeah, have a good weekend. Goodbye. Bye. See you later. See ya.